Alors, euh, bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue. Euh, Aujourd'hui, nous avons la, la chance d'avoir euh, notre invité, Yann Marquette, qui est à l'Université de Queensland, à Brisbane. Alors, euh, Yann est un collaborateur de longue date euh, au CRM et c'était en fait un, un étudiant de Pavel au doctorat. Il y a la maîtrise aussi, hein, je crois. Oui, oui, au doctorat. Ah, oui, OK. Alors, euh, ben, je vais te laisser la parole sans plus tarder. OK. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, talk in this uh, nice series of uh, seminars on physical mathematics. So, uh, the title and bidding of Raka Algebra and Super Integrable Systems. So, it will be mainly about this uh, very recent work with uh, Danilo Latini and uh, Yao Zhang Zhang. Uh, here at uh, the University of Queensland, but I will discuss toward the end uh, a different type of embedding of the Raka uh, algebra. Okay, so mainly what I will try to uh, convince you is that the Raka algebra naturally arises uh, as embedded into larger quadratic algebra, uh, which characterize n-dimensional superintegrable model with non-central terms. And in particular, I will look at two families of such n-dimensional system, the smorodinsky winternitz uh, hamiltonian and a generalized Kepler-Coulomb uh, system. And uh, I will present some uh, closure relation and higher order uh, relations, which has been, I think, not pointed out uh, in the literature uh, so far. And at the end, for the case of uh, R3, uh, so the Raka algebra with three generator, I will discuss how uh, it can be generated from uh, underlying Lie algebra and the enveloping algebra and how that can point out some other way to uh, construct, classify uh, quadratic or polynomial algebras. Okay, so uh, Hamiltonian uh, system in n dimensions. Uh, with the following Hamiltonian is integrable if it allow n integrals of motion that are well defined in involution and functionally independent. Uh, it will be super integrable if it admits further uh, integral of motion. So n plus k, k can be one up to n minus one and they will be functionally independent as well. And there is the case of maximally super integrable system if k is equal to n minus uh, one. And we'll see that there is two cases that appear in context of the co-algebra symmetry. When uh, there is not necessarily maximal uh, super integrability, meaning two n minus one, but where there is uh, at first quasi maximal super integrability, two n minus two, or even 2n minus 3 integral of motion on which other set of integral of motion can be uh, constructed, okay? And these definitions, they can be extended uh, in context of quantum mechanics, but the uh, requirement of independence now become algebraic. And this is something that may be these higher order uh, relations, the closure relations that we will uh, present here could also uh, bring some uh, alternative way to think the relations among the integral because there is one thing that has not been necessarily established in quantum mechanics and this is uh, explicit uh, algebraic independence of the integral of motion for uh, different models. Okay, so the the starting point of the classification of super integrable system uh, is the 60s and the following uh, work by uh, uh, Pavel uh, Winternitz and uh, collaborator. And uh, the problem was first cast in a two dimensional Euclidean space. So uh, a quantum system or classical system would have up to, uh, would have two extra integral uh, of motion. And it has been uh, demonstrated that these models have a lot of properties, multi-separability, exact solvability, degenerate spectrum. They can be, uh, their wave function can be related to orthogonal polynomials. For example, 
for the four system on the Euclidean space, they are connected with uh, Laguerre uh, polynomials. And uh, from uh, the work by Miller, Kress, and Kalnins, uh, roughly at the late 90s, uh, early 2000, uh, there is a classification of two dimensional system on conformally flat spaces. And what appears to be clear from these uh, works is that quadratic algebra uh, appear naturally uh, in the context of superintegrable system. And the form is the, the following. Uh, so the commutator of A and B uh, give uh, C. And when you take the commutator back of A with C or B with C, you get a quadratic uh, polynomial in the generator A, B. And there is one term that is, uh, for example, in the commutator of A with C, there is no B square. This term can be removed usually by taking linear combination. And this is the form also that uh, satisfy the Jacobi identity. And as well, these parameter alpha, gamma, delta, epsilon, uh, zeta, A, D, uh, and Z, they can be function or polynomial, in fact, of the Hamiltonian and more generally uh, depend on central element. Uh, so the, the central element, they are uh, generator which commute with all the other integrals of motion. And uh, for example, in two dimension, this is only the Hamiltonian in practice. We'll see that uh, at, toward the end of the talk that one can get that algebra purely on algebraic, uh, in an algebraic approach and see that in fact, this structure constant will depend in the algebraic setting on a uh, Cartan element, but as well on uh, Casimir and in, invariant in some way when we go to that uh, picture. But uh, so this algebra, they, they were uh, obtained uh, in the, let's say, late 80s, early uh, 90s, uh, Granovsky, Zedanov, Lutsenko, uh, there was some paper from 88 and some er earlier one as well. And uh, this form was also studied by Daskalo Yanis in context of superintegrable system. If there is not the term uh, E, uh, E square in the commutation relation uh, B with C, then uh, it can reduce with some choice of parameter to the Raka algebra. And there was other similar uh, form called the ASCII-Wilson uh, quadratic algebra. But something that has been also uh, discussed is the connection with a special function. So we learned Millard have uh, demonstrated how for all the model on conformally flat space, the 59 uh, system divided in 12 classes, they all can be related uh, to uh, orthogonal polynomial among this uh, class. So there is a, a interesting connection between superintegrable system, quadratic algebra, and uh, special function. Uh, so much less is known about the case in higher uh, dimension. And there was some, let's say, preliminary work uh, in uh, 2014, 15, 16, uh, where some class of superintegrable system in n dimension were uh, looked at and their quadratic algebras for which there was uh, only a part of the symmetry algebra that was quadratic and uh, the remaining part was a uh, Lie algebra of higher rank. And inside the structure constant, there was the presence of Casimir operator of this Lie algebra. So in some way it was, uh, a different algebraic structure than the usual Lie algebra, but it was just uh, the closest that you can be in some way. And uh, in general, there would be uh, a structure that would be more complicated, but I will explain just briefly here how you can still, without even knowing the complete symmetry algebra, without even relying on all the commutation relation, obtain the energy spectrum. So this is another uh, question, how many commutation relation or constraint do we really need to constrain the spectrum of a superintegrable uh, system to present uh, 
and what mean also uh, algebraic uh, derivation. Uh, okay, so just as an uh, example, and I will come back on this example uh, a bit later with the co-algebra uh, symmetry. Here we can see that this is a deformation of the uh, Kepler uh, system where there exist these singular terms. So days term one over x i square, and the index run from one to n minus one. So the fact that the index does not run up to n is critical here, because when the index run up to n, there exists a set of quartic integral of motion. But I will demonstrate later that even with the presence of quartic integral of motion, you can still close the algebra in a quadratic way. Uh, and uh, here I would just present the integral of motion, and and this is. Um, a way also to illustrate uh, that sometimes this is uh, better to have uh, a more detailed understanding of how the integral of motion have been uh, created. For example, here there is the integral uh, x, z, l, and y, p. And in some way, the z, l, and the y, p, they are obtained from the left and right Casimir operator in the co-algebra uh, symmetry. And this is why if you look at the way the index are uh, obtained, uh, they will run in some way from, from the left or from the, the right. And this integral x is an integ extra integral uh, uh, in addition to the co-algebra uh, symmetry, which provide only uh, 2n minus 3. There is the integral, so 2n minus 2. And there is the integral x, which is uh, 2n minus 1. There is uh, many set uh, related to integrability. And what I want to point out is how, uh, if you take subset of this integral, for example, uh, y1 and x give rise to a quadratic algebra with three generators. And what I would like to point out here is, uh, for example, the structure constant depend on h and z n minus 2. But Zn minus 2 is uh, a central element relative to the generator of that quadratic algebra. And you can still obtain a Casimir invariant related to this three generator algebra. Okay, so this is not a, uh, let's say, a global Casimir. This is something that is only for this uh, specific uh, substructure, let's say. And you can do the same also with Z1 and Y2. And here we can see that there is the presence of Y3. There is also the presence uh, of Y1. But Y1 and Y3, they are central relative to Z1 and Y2 and also C2. So you can do the same and you can create a cubic uh, Casimir invariant. And, uh, you can uh, also create n minus two other uh, quadratic algebras with zi minus one and yi. And uh, again, there is other central element, for example, yi plus one, zi minus two uh, are uh, central uh, relative to zi minus one, yi, and ci, and then, this can be seen as a three generator algebra. And what one can, can do is apply a deform oscillator construction and uh, define for some of the operator that they have a diagonal action on some number operator and that other uh, generator will have a three diagonal action. And by combining these constraints, and by using the fact that all days Casimir can be rewritten in terms of central element, and that day central element form a set of n commutating operator, you can present an algebraic derivation of the spectrum. I, I won't present uh, more detail because I want to uh, focus on the structure of, of the algebra of n dimensional superintegrable system. But here, this is just a, a reminder that we don't even need to. Uh, sometime define explicitly what is the algebra. Uh, but obviously, if we would be able to construct the complete symmetry algebra, we could rely on uh, representation theory and uh, define more uh, appropriately uh, 
things uh, over there. So here it was not apparent, but there was a co-algebra uh, symmetry. And here what I want to, uh, and so more or less, the idea of constructing uh, higher rank quadratic algebra was appearing, appearing in work of uh, Genet, Vinet, uh, around uh, 2016, Iliev, 2016, 17. Uh, there was some other work by uh, Sarah Post in 2015. And there is some understanding in terms of commutant of Lie algebra. Still, there is the differential operator realization that play a, a role uh, uh, there. But something that I would like to point out is that this Raka algebra that was determined in days work play a broader role. And this is what I will uh, present with that uh, recent uh, preprint uh, with Danido and uh, Yao. OK, so in the co-algebra uh, setting, which can be defined in uh, classical uh, mechanics, you, you, you define uh, some uh, realization that depend on the coordinate and the momentum. And one uh, key element here, this is the one dimensional realization. It will then, uh, for the Casimir operator, reduce to a constant. And by using uh, coproduct, and uh, this has been looked uh, extensively by uh, Ballesteros, Engel Ballesteros, uh, Erens, uh, Ranisco uh, in 2004, 2009. Uh, you, you can, by this approach, generate, for example, for this G plus of N, G minus of N, G3 of N, uh, the corresponding uh, realization. And you can, and more or less, the idea is to construct a Hamilton, classical Hamiltonian out of, let's say, uh, polynomial of G plus and uh, G3. But for G minus, there is some freedom because the, it depends on the coordinate. So this is a very special realization in some, in some way. But from a mathematical point of view, this could be extended to other things. But here, uh, this is uh, the realization we restrict on. And you can begin to look at left and right uh, Casimir. And the total Casimir is given by the following expression. So we can recognize that this is more or less what uh, has been obtained for the model on the sphere. And it was in work by uh, Sarah Post and Luc Vinet. And, but the idea is that when you are on the sphere, you, uh, the total Casimir is connected to your uh, Hamiltonian. And this is a very special case. But there is more generally freedom to take the Hamiltonian to be other type of polynomial. And they would be uh, by days uh, left and right Casimir, uh, like the following form for the CIG. And what I will define the left is the, uh, and the right are the C upper index M and C lower index M. And they are connected in some way with the uh, basis that was uh, used for the Raka algebra in terms of the, the PIG. Okay, so in some way, what people have been obtaining uh, for many years in context of the co-algebra is some set of integral of motion that are linear combination of the generator of what is the usual Raka algebra. And this allow uh, to create 2n minus 3 integral of motion. And there exists the Hamiltonian that is extra integral. So this is 2n minus 2. So this is quasi maximally super integral system. And in some cases, there will be extra integral of motion. So here, uh, this allow in some way to say that for all Hamiltonian with the co-algebra, if I would choose a potential with, which depend as well on V of, of R, so there would be this singularity, there is one over X I square plus anything that will depend on the, uh, only on the radial coordinate this would have a Raka algebra. So this is a really wide class of uh, quasi maximally super integrable uh, system. And one could have the freedom to construct model on curve space, uh, monopole interaction. And so then all these models that was obtained by Ballesteros and Ranisco over the years, they would have at least this Raka algebra in another basis as 
symmetry algebra, and there will be other integral of motion. And I will uh, now point out that, uh, okay, so this is the, the way one would uh, usually think of the Raka algebra. There is the SPIG, and by taking, here this is in classical mechanics, I will discuss the uh, quantum mechanics. You take Poisson bracket when there is one index that is common. If there is no index that are common, it trivially gives zero. If the two index are the same, obviously as well, gives zero. And you generate this integral F I G K. And depending on this, if there is one or two index that coincide, there will be different uh, cases. Okay, so there is P I G with P G K, P G K with F I G K, P K L with F I G K, and so on. And it close in a quadratic algebra. Let's remember that the C G, the C K, for example, they are only constant because they are related to these one-dimensional Casimir, and in the realization, they uh, reduced only to a, a constant. And in some way, if you, you take the limit, one would see that uh, days uh, C uh, upper index and lower index will reduce to some linear combination of angular momentum. So this is some way to try to see that for model with rotational invariance, there is this SON, Lie algebra, but here there is the uh, co-algebra that is the symmetry algebra for uh, model with uh, the co-algebra. And something that has not been pointed out uh, so far is that there exists cubic relations. And they are connected with what uh, Willow and Millard have been doing in around 2005 and six for class the classification of two-dimensional system on conformally flat space. There was the role of a six order operator that was used to uh, as a closure relation. And here we can probably see an algebraic version of, of, of such idea of closure. The square of the FIGK or the product of FIGK, FGKL, and so on, they close among the P, the, the PIG, and so with cubic polynomials. And uh, this offer some further constraint among these uh, integral uh, F. And in some way, they can be think in terms of uh, Jordan in some way, uh, polynomial when we will go to the quantum setting, okay? And they are likely to probably play a role in quantum uh, mechanic as, as well, okay? So just to uh, here uh, illustrate uh, in uh, quantum mechanics, this is, uh, direct, you mainly modify the realization. So this is in more or less uh, a way to quantize. And by taking appropriate redefinition of the FIGK, uh, you can then obtain the following algebra. Uh, here, because we wanted to be close to the uh, classical setting when we take the limit, so there is this I H bar that is present. So this is probably different of what it has been uh, uh, presented, uh, but this uh, constant does not affect uh, the fact that this is the Raka algebra. So again, it closes, and when you take a certain limit, you can uh, recover directly the classical case, which is expected for uh, when there is a quadratic uh, integral uh, of motion. But again, you can take any potential depending on this radial coordinate. And let's remember that the co-algebra give model with this, this singular term, this one over x i square. And uh, then we would have as a, a sub-algebra, the Raka algebra. And in the similar way, but this is much more involving to establish, where here I have the complete uh, symmetric, uh, let's say, uh, product, so this, uh, given below with the ABC. So this is the sixth term. Everything can be uh, closed in the following way. And in some way, this could be uh, analogous to what happened for a two-dimensional system. When we rewrite the algebra in the form of theta algebra, there exists some ladder operator, which can, which can be not only calculated at the level of B, B dagger, but for which each, each product B, B dagger, and B dagger B can be explicited, uh, explicitly written in terms of the number operator. So here, not only we are able to close the commutation relation, but in some way, some anti-commutation relation or product 
of operators. Okay, so uh, there exists days for turn. So it depends on the if the index coincide or uh, not. And there exists something that uh, have been pointed out uh, in in some recent paper about the uh, a basis for quadratic algebra. Uh, as for Lie algebra, there exists a PBW basis for the enveloping algebra. Maybe these extra relation can also provide some, some way uh, to think about uh, those. Uh, okay, and, and, and maybe they, they, they play analogous role to higher order relation for Lie algebra. For example, there exists this ser type relation, but here this is more uh, preliminary in some, in some way. Okay, but what I wanted to uh, look at as a first example is the Smolodinsky Internet System in n dimension. Okay, so this is uh, applying the co-algebra approach. So we already know that we have these C upper index, C lower index, which are the left and right Casimir. They are uh, written in terms of these PIG, which are some generator of the RAC algebra they uh, give rise to the FIGK and we can close the algebra. But here, there exists some extra integrals of motion. They are not all algebraically independent, okay? But sometimes it, there is some advantage to use linearly independent integral of motion to close uh, algebra. It, it provides some, uh, let's say more, uh, interesting uh, algebra. And the idea here, is the, there exists this component HI, okay, which are simply each of the components because there is the obvious separation of variable in uh, Cartesian coordinate. And you can construct from uh, this, from the HI and the PIG, okay? So when the index I and G are not the same, the extra integral, so these days uh, uh, G, uh, IJ, and uh, okay, so here when the index i, g, k, l, m are all different, you can, on the top of this relation for the Raka algebra, provide uh, a closed quadratic algebra. So this is the commutation. And again, this depends on if the index coincide or not. So there is h, i here, this uh, g, i, j, h, i, uh, GK and uh, and so on. So it closes in a quadratic uh, way, and there exists other uh, relations. So this is in quantum mechanics. This can be also done in classical uh, case, and one can more or less be ensured that there would be two n minus one uh, integral of motion that are uh, independent. This come from the the coalgebra uh, approach. So and in the limit h bar going to zero, they will uh, coincide. Uh, not uh, yeah, in the limit h bar going to zero, uh, you can recover uh, because there is the h bar that is in these uh, generators as well. Uh, so it's not necessarily uh, explicit. Okay, and as it was the case for the sub Raka algebra, there exists a closure relation. So the square. The anti commutator, more, more or less, in terms of days, uh, totally uh, symmetric uh, product with three index here. So there is uh, days three uh, closure relation. So they are polynomials among the uh, J and uh, the H, the P, and again, they CI and so on. They are only constant uh, in the co algebra. And there is this other uh, relation. They are quite involved to obtain in, in practice. But I think this is a general feature of uh, quadratic al algebra. But uh, we will see that it will take another uh, form for the generalized Kepler system. Here, there is a correspondence between six order closure relation. So when we write everything in terms of differential operator in this cubic, uh, these cubic polynomials, but uh, for the model, they can be higher order, but still cubic. I, I will uh, give more detail. Okay, so uh, this was uh, one uh, case. The other one, and that was still an open uh, problem. So here the sum you can see run up to uh, 
j equal one up to n, and there exists the Kepler term at the, the n. So this is in, in the form of uh, a potential depending on the radial uh, variable. And there is this, uh, this block that is related to the co-algebra. And there exists the upper and lower index, so the left and right Casimir from the co-algebra. There is the Hamiltonian. But there exists a set of extra integral of motion Ri, which are fourth order. And we can see that this would reduce to uh, the Runge-Lenz vector in the appropriate uh, limit. But here, this is the uh, integral, the set of integrals of motion that uh, is more uh, complicated and, and make that so far the uh, complete symmetry algebra was not uh, presented. So and there exists some uh, constraint with the, the C upper index N is the total Casimir. So there, there exists some constraint. And this is, uh, let's say, the analog for this model of the, the poly constraint that he used uh, to solve the hydrogen uh, at, at, atom. So the, the R, I uh, here, and uh, they, the, the C, uh, N. So they could reduce in some way to the Runge-Lenz vector and the sum of the square of the angular momentum uh, component. And this will uh, as well reduce uh, some relation in the classical uh, case, which I omit uh, here. But you can as well create two index uh, generator from the Ri and the PIG. So this is the, the, the tricks, the, the, the index play an uh, important role in uh, the way to define the relations. And uh, this is also what makes uh, the identification of the algebra easier. Because there is PIG, they, uh, they have this nice property that they, they commute among each other if they don't have the same index, which is not the true when you have the uh, left and right uh, Casimir. Okay, so this this point out how this basis of the PIG is more convenient than the C uh, M upper index and C M lower index. But again, days close uh, when I take the R I P I G. Uh, it gives me uh, days, and uh, I can close uh, further uh, commutation relation with the R and the P in a quadratic way. Again. The, uh, there is the appearance of the Hamiltonian. So this is a quadratic algebra modulo structure constant like the CI, which are constant, but modulo as well, the central element, the Hamiltonian that appear. Okay, so this is not, uh, let's say a finite dimensional uh, quadratic al algebra, only if you, you, you see H as a, uh, let's say, a fixed in energy, OK? So this is similar to the hydrogen atom in some way. And there exists days extra uh, commutation uh, relation. So that can be done. So we can close the algebra in a quadratic way, even if the integral of motion involves not only a quadratic integral of motion, so the PIG, but even with days higher integral of motion of order 4, and when we take this further commutation relation, we do get integral of motion of order three and five. And, but everything is still closed in what can be seen a quadratic algebra. And if we take the uh, uh, redefinition of the generator R in the way as it given uh, below, so just with a, a, it can also simplify some of these relations and you can also find closure relations as well, meaning they will still be cubic relation that involved, that will be of the form quadratic of some uh, generator in, and in term of cubic polynomial of the other one, or in term of anti-commutator. So here, if you can see the first term, this is the anti-commutator. The other one, this is an anti-commutator, okay? The, Different relations depend on if index coincide, but everything can be closed in a cubic way. Okay, so th this is uh, more or less everything that, that can be uh, done at this level. The quadratic uh, relation 
plus some to be closure relation. But here, this closure relation does not have anything to do with a sixth order op operator as a differential operator because they involve higher order uh, integral of motion. So then the day, day's relation can be up to order even 10 in some way as differential operator. So this is quite uh, involved to do, but it can be done. So there's two, let's say, prototype of super integrable system, the Smogodinsky winter nits in N's mention, and this generalized Kepler system illustrate that this is a conjecture, but for day's model obtained by uh, uh, Ranisco, Ballesteros, uh, Erans in the co-algebra, maybe they, they would on, on curved space with monopoles can be as well closed in a quadratic way. And uh, they will also have this uh, closure uh, relation. So here, this is extra uh, closure uh, relation. So here, everything has been done at the level of uh, Yes, of differential operators. Uh, so the, more or less, uh, we can understand a quadratic algebra as there exists some explicit differential operators for the integral of motion, the Hamiltonian. We can take commutator. Obviously, they will satisfy some uh, associative uh, algebra. And uh, then they appear to be closed. And it appears that the structure constant might depend on the Hamiltonian. But this is more or less uh, something that is a case by case uh, thing, but it offers no way to understand uh, from uh, a more algebraic point of view what they are. But here we'll try to offer some more uh, a different perspective on the Raka algebra, but it will only be for R3. So this is still quite limited, but it can be interesting as well as an example. And this was more or less conjecture that there is the relation between R, uh, N, the Raka algebra, and SLN. So you can embed SLN uh, from the Raka algebra. The Raka algebra can be embedded in some way in SLN from uh, uh, using differential operators. So this was around, uh, let's say, uh, quite recently. And there, there is some paper with, by Luc Vinet and Nicolas uh, Crampé as well that was applied to another context, but still point out some connection between the algebra and a, and a polynomial algebra. So here I will start with something that was done by uh, Calzada, uh, Del Olmo, and Rodriguez, uh, Calzada, Curu, Negro. They, they had a series of paper in the early 2000s. They were looking at model uh, on the sphere, on some other curved space. And for the model on the two sphere, they were re related with U3. And they were recasting everything in terms of ladder operator or factorization operator acting on some explicit wave function. But here I will play a different game, which is defining the, let's say, SU3 Lie algebra and to only deal with polynomial in the enveloping algebra. Okay, and this has a connection also with uh, maximal uh, abelian algebra. Uh, in, in some way uh, for the algebra. So here it's not, uh, so this is what is in that recent paper with uh, Francisco Correa, Del Olmo, and uh, Javier Negro. Uh, and in some way you can rewrite or you can think of the Hamiltonian as polynomial T1, T2, T3, which commute with the, with the let's say, Cartan generator X1 and X2. And uh, it can be rewritten in terms of the, the second order Casimir and days Cartan generator X1 and X2. And there was some early work uh, by uh, Del Olmo and Javier Negro, which pointed out that integral of motion can be obtained in an uh, algebraic way, but they didn't succeed in obtaining, let's say, uh, algebra in that way. But from an algebraic point of view, and that would be a commutant. So this T1, T2, T3, they are second order polynomial, which commute with X1 and X2. And there is days Casimir invariant C2 and C3. And what can be uh, done is you can take further commutation relation. 
take the commutator of T1 with T2, this is a T12. You can take commutator of T12 with T1, this is T121. You can take commutator of T12 with T2, this is T122. And you can begin to form polynomial in the enveloping algebra of SU3. And you can begin to try to look which are of these polynomials are the same, and if you can close the algebra in, in that way. Okay, and there exists some uh, fourth order polynomial, for example, T1 to 1, T1 to 3. So th this is the explicit expression in terms of the generator of the SU3 algebra. So let's remember the T1 and the T2 and T3, they can be think of days integral of motion related to the model on the, on the sphere. Okay, so in other notation, they, they were like the, the Q, uh, IG, uh, Q12, Q13, and Q23 that were obtained before by, let's say, Sarah Post and uh, others for the model on the two sphere. And there is some redundancy. So the T1 to 2 is connected with these other T1 to 1 and T1 to 3. And uh, if you would go in the differential operator realization, there would be connection among the T12 square and the T1, the T2, the T3. But when you are in the algebraic setting, this is no longer the case. So the, the differential operator, so this is something that is obvious in some way that the enveloping algebra of the algebra made of differential operator or in terms of expression related to a Lie algebra, it's not the same. So in some way, when you go to an uh, enveloping algebra, you need there's some further constraint from using explicit differential operator realization. But still, you can close things. And here I will present uh, algebra. So for me, at this level, that could be a, a way to think of the RAC algebra. So I will start with my uh, Hamiltonian in terms of the Cartan and the second order Casimir. I will find second order polynomial T1, T2, T3, which commute with the, uh, the Hamiltonian. And I can close up to uh, here, this is uh, T1 to 1, T1 to 2, or quartic polynomial. So you need to go one higher order up in some way if you close. And here, it don't depend on the structure constant. Uh, I mean, the structure constant are only integer in that setting. So this is a very, let's say, canonical way to define a symmetry algebra here. And But there is something that can be done more. We can go back to the Raka algebra, but this is by using the cubic Casimir. So not only the quadratic Casimir play a role, but the cubic Casimir can be used to close at the level of T1 to 1 and T1 to 2. So, th so this is something that could also allow to think of days quadratic or even polynomial algebra as things that are living in, ter in, in terms of the enveloping algebra of some of some Lie algebra and not necessarily uh, uh, simple. Okay, and something that I just want to point out here is that from that algebra made by T1, uh, T2, T1 and T2, you can form a Casimir operator that is cubic relative to days T1, T2 and T1, T2. Uh, it depends also on C2, C3, which are the quadratic and cubic Casimir invariant, the Cartan, which are uh, x1, x2. Uh, and there is also x3, but it's connected uh, as well to those. And what you can do is that you can rewrite this Casimir and this in terms only of x1 and x2, c2 and c3. So this is the equivalent when we are constructing, uh, let's say, a RAC algebra or quadratic algebra for a super integrable system. And that we, we find the Casimir operator and that we rewrite the Casimir operator in terms of the central element only. And usually it's only the Hamiltonian. But here we have, let's say, an algebraic characterization of that, which is the Casimir operator being uh, rewritten not only in terms of the generator, but in terms of the Cartan and Casimir of this initial SU3D algebra. And in some way, this is more general than what it looked because of the work by Willard Millard, where there was these 
59 super integrable systems on confirmed flat space that were related to this generic model on the sphere. So in some way, that construction would apply with some suitable, uh, let's say, uh, limit and contraction to probably other of these super integrable uh, system. Okay, so uh, here, I hope that I was able to convince you that uh, for a larger class of super integrable system related to co-algebra symmetry, one can uh, have the RAC algebra, but the RAC algebra will be embedded in some larger st structure. And that in classical mechanics and quantum mechanics, you can, on top of this quadratic algebra, which might uh, have structure constant related to the, some central element, allow cubic constraint, which can be uh, seen as a closure relation. And that probably could be useful for other purpose and uh, algebraic study of this uh, model. And that we uh, that can be done for two families of n-dimensional system, and uh, as well uh, that uh, in some way uh, with these other work that we can understand as well these quadratic algebra from two perspectives, from uh, the perspective of the differential operators, but as well as living inside the enveloping algebra of a Lie algebra, and that you can have an interpretation of the Hamiltonian, the integral of motion, and closing the, the, the structure. And uh, so there is some other work coming with uh, Francisco Correa, uh, and also with Campois Morstrasberg. We were looking at some other construction which connect uh, also with the Eden uh, symmetry. Uh, so uh, thanks. Merci. Thank you. So I think uh, we have time for questions. So you could uh, you could uh, ask question in, in, directly. I think. Okay. Rich? Can I can I ask? Please? So I have a a couple of questions. So just to be clear, so in your conclusion, uh, when you speak about these uh, cubic uh, these extra relations. Are these uh, realized abstractly or because, or they are only verified in special representation, for instance, when the uh, do, do you operators mean those? are... No, it was uh, more something like uh, when you were uh, taking the, uh, the square of F and things like that. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so at that level, so let's say that uh, before that point of the talk, everything was in terms of differential uh, operators. And after that point, it's uh, algebraic. So yes, here it was in term, in classical mechanics, in terms of the explicit realization and in quantum, in terms of the explicit realization. So this is not, let's say, uh, unusual to think that they would close in a cubic way, but uh, still, uh, well, I, 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 of, of course, when you are, when you are in a representation, you naturally have additional relations. This is not a surprise, right? So, if you, the the simplest example is if you have a, a finite dimensional matrices, you you have relation. If you take enough powers, you will it will be zero or thing. Yes, something like that. Okay. But, no, I just want here, to. I, I would distinguish because I I think here we need to be careful as well because there. There exists the differential operator realization. There is the representation, and there is the algebraic uh, uh, derivation. So here, uh, because I know that in what you have done, you have uh, rely uh, or with Sarapos on these Raka polynomial and using the explicit uh, representation. Here we, everything that was done before here for the cubic relation or in terms of the differential operators. So this is uh, a computation that was made only out of the differential operators. There is obviously connection between the, the use of the realization and the representation. But okay. no, I, I, I think was, also- I was just uh, wanting to clarify if these should be, you know, if you define your algebra in terms of generators and relations, if these are extra relation with which you need to quotient uh, as an ideal yeah. to, to define 
properly the algebra. Ex or exactly. This, this is something I was wondering if they play an analogous role to define a, a basis, because so far no one have addressed the question of what is really the basis for quadratic algebra and what would be the most appropriate way. And sometimes there is not a unique way because of the, you can write, there is some uh, sometimes linear relation between the Hamiltonian and some integral. So there is some freedom. So I think that you are right that probably they tell us something about the basis and maybe the, the, there is something a bit more, let's say fundamental, I think, uh, of, of those. Okay, well, uh, just when you enlarge the algebra, uh, because what we, uh, we had defined as the Raka algebra, the rank N Raka algebra was just given in terms of the intermediate Casimir operators. But so what you, the enlargement you give is that you include the uh, underlying Lie algebra generators to the Casimir operators and uh, no I... no uh, here this is uh, for example it's because there is some some te technicality like for example the model on the sphere is the only one for which the coalgebra provide all the integral of motion usually if because this is the the, the total Casimir in some way is connected to your Hamiltonian here that's not the case you take. If you think of the coalgebra, you take a polynomial of the G plus, G minus, and G3. So, uh, so that's the thing. You, 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 the Raka algebra is, is living, let's say it's for, uh, you have Rn for n dimension. Usually for the model of the, on the sphere, they would be like the Rn plus one. No, but I, I, want, I would like to try to have a picture in terms of centralizer, I would define the Raka algebra as a centralizer of the diagonal action of SL, uh, SU2 in N, uh, N uh, plus one product. Uh, yes. And what is the role, what are your X, and obviously the, the, uh, Casim, the intermediate Casimir are in the centralizers. What are the extra generator how would you define these extra generators algebraically? Maybe because for the, okay. So for example, for the uh, Smogodinsky Winternet system, they, you could think of them maybe as some other, because they are like these HI. So they are some component. Uh, so it was not clear how to interpret those in terms of the coalgebra uh, symmetry. Uh, can one interpret those in terms of another coalgebra uh, structure? Well, me, this is why for me, they look like generators of the underlying Lie algebra, but maybe this is something we should discuss because then I, I, I wanted, my last question was to be clear on your, on your last statement. Did you obtain an embedding of the Raka algebra Rn into SLN plus one? Is this the statement? No, uh, the, at, at this, uh, so I, when I started with the algebraic construction, it's only R3 in term of SU3. So, uh, uh, so this is only a very particular case of the Raka, the one on the two sphere. This could probably, because I know that you did the paper where there is a conjecture where there is for the general Raka a connection with uh, SLN, and that is via differential operators. But I think that so far, these computation have been very difficult to do even for R3 because of these, for example, these relation here, mm -hmm. when I generate these polynomials in the enveloping algebra, it, 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 well, one just, would just to, to- Okay, but again, uh, Yen, just to leave with a clear uh, picture in my mind, R3, it is known to be uh, that to admit an embedding in SL2. Yes, so that's the, that's the interesting thing. I think that embedding are not necessarily unique because I remember that you did that paper, uh, I don't know if it's with Vincent Genet, but there was that embedding with SL2, there was this integral uh, G1, G2, G3, and there was, uh, 
Here, this is an embedding related to SU3. Uh, and the, the, because different embedding can have different origin. Here, I'm, I'm starting with curtain generator and I impose to have a commutant, so to have second order polynomial which commute with, with day. So this is X2 and uh, X1. So this is my starting point to create in that algebraic setting this polynomial T1, T2, T3. And from that, any polynomial obtained by the commutation relation would as well commute with the X1 and X2. So I'm, uh, and so in some way, uh, and, and I think that here there is something more. I think that here, this is an explicit uh, finite W algebra. Okay, something to, to reflect on. Thank so, you. So, so <laughs> I think that th th that could be obviously generalized, but the computation here was difficult to, to do purely algebraically. Uh, but I think that they could be carried more generally for uh, other Lie al algebra. And, and maybe one could define even a, a, a super integrable system, like let's say algebraically. It was more or less done by Del Olmo and, and Javier in some older paper from the 90s. And even uh, Pavel also uh, with Zazendos, there was some, uh, some papers that, that were discussing this issue. I think that here, it, it's just that everything is obtained explicitly for the symmetry algebra. Thank you. Thank you. Other question? I don't see, I don't see any, oh, any yes. other, Oui. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Ah, oh, hi. And, and, uh, yeah. I know. So you mentioned that you can use this uh, polynomial algebra to compute the spectrum of the system. Is it possible to obtain, let's say, the S matrix for uh, not bound state? Can you, uh, you use the polynomial algebra to compute this object or not? Uh, that I've never uh, done uh, such computation. And I'm not aware that there is other information that have been obtained, let's say, in, uh, in, in, in that sense. Uh, but maybe that there is some other information that could be ob obtained out of, of these uh, algebra. And even in the classical setting, no one has uh, exploited as well these al algebra, algebra in some way, and probably they tell something of the trajectories or there is some other information that could be obtained in practice. So I think that uh, there is many other information that could be looked at, but uh, I'm not aware of anything that would have been done for S metric. Maybe look at some. Well, I, I'm just uh, wondering because the I don't know the model, you know, when you look at the model on the sphere, the, the spectrum is purely discrete. Uh, the, so, yeah. so there yeah. are no, there are no scattering states. Exactly. So the, you, you cannot pose the problem. Um, and uh, so, but uh, and also, the, ex the extensions, when, when you, you do these projections, when, when you have something like a Coulomb problem, uh, I, I don't know, I have not reflected on these problems. And, and maybe I can make maybe another com comment is that usually when you find the spectrum algebraically, you get more than only the bound state. It's not, you, you use the finite dimensional representation in, in what I've been do doing, but you get always a lot of spurious states as, as well. So they, yeah. they, 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 tell, they could tell something else may, maybe. So what I mean is that for bound state, sometimes it's among some other let's say, solution of the algebra. So uh, it's not clear to me how you would maybe extract other in information from, from that, but they might be also among. Uh, yeah, I can add that uh, many years ago, we published a paper where uh, scattering amplitude for one dimensional case, for example, partial Taylor potential can be found uh, from quadratic uh, Jacobi algebra. So in principle, yes, in principle it's possible, but of course this is not yet developed. So okay. this okay. is no, thank a you. new area. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Maybe a last question, Ian. 
Uh, have you looked at the wave functions and the overlaps between, uh, uh, you know, wave functions uh, separated in different bases? Uh, My, no, what I no. want to ask is, are the RACA, uh, the multivariate RACA polynomials occurring again, or do you get some other possibilities with your extensions? Uh, no, nothing has been looked uh, in this di direction. Uh, not, so, so that would be open problem to, to be done. Uh. Okay. Good. Uh, another one, another question? No? No? So we thank the speaker again. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Jan. Okay. And, uh, Very good, thanks. See you. Yeah. See you.